With that, I want to shift to uh, toward our first panel of the day. Um, and the, the general topic um, is, uh, is about um, the benefits of joining and participating in the Academy Software Foundation. Why should you participate? Why should you think about uh, joining in some way or another uh, the Academy Software Foundation, your, your company to join as a member or yourself just to simply participate into all of our activities that are all free. So before we get into the panel, we, um, we have a, a video testimonial of some of our members who couldn't be here live with us um, that was recorded. Let's have a look. One of our goals as a, as a company is to rely on as many industry standards as we can. We want to be able to focus our areas and our R&D efforts on things that provide uniqueness, unique value, differentiation, strategic focus. And so it's amazing if we can have standard tools agreed upon by the industry and developed in conjunction with other partners in the industry. The more we can do that, the better off we are as an organization. We really saw the foundation as a critical piece in what was required to evolve um, uh, evolve the, the way that we, we collaborate more broadly across the industry on really important open source projects. It's just a really, it's just a really great place to have that that contact. I also like the fact that the uh, Academy Software Foundation is able to find time to think strategically about how we should uh, grow the set of things that we can bring into the fold to benefit the industry. You know, we view our participation in this as helping to steer the direction of these projects that we're reliant on in the direction that's going to be useful to us as well. And that we know, you know, continuing to develop along the lines that we are going to need for our future as well. When the ASWF was created, we joined as a founding member because we fundamentally believe this was the right approach to solving that problem. The problem of how do we get the industry to align that for certain things, you don't need to be, you know, custom. It doesn't need to be so bespoke. There's certain things that we can work together as an industry to make a standard that makes it easier for everyone. DreamWorks is a founding member of the board. For us, it was uh, an important step to take right from the beginning. We saw that OpenEXR was kind of floating without a rudder. The, the person that had developed it had moved on to the company, the person that had come in to replace them had moved on to a different company. And so we had contributions to OpenEXR, a number of people had contributions to OpenEXR, and it was the de facto standard in the industry for supporting these images that we make. I think the Academy Software Foundation is really, uh, you know, kind of came into being at the, the right time where it made sense to uh, have an overall umbrella organization where we could pull those discussions out into uh, not just uh, you know, one place, but also have them become an ongoing thing where we can interact on a regular basis. I think it would be difficult to find a studio that wasn't running on open source right now in some form or another. Even the, you know, the, the, all the commercial third party content creation tools have incorporated open source to some uh, extent. Become involved in the Academy Software Foundation today and start improving your production pipeline practices. And with that, with that introduction, um, I'd like to bring up our panelists and we have a, a special guest that was not on the, on the agenda that we decided to bring in in the way of John Murtick from the Linux Foundation. So that's what you get when you join our live session, scoops, things that happen that only you have seen. So if we want to bring up our panelists here, I will move out of um, slide mode for a second. There we are. And I'm glad to introduce, um, and, and I will let you make your own introduction about what you do in details, but Jennifer Goldfin from Foundry, Doug Walker from Autodesk, Jim Jeffers from Intel, and John Mertix from the Linux Foundation. Welcome. And um, I would like to thank you for being here and give you the, the microphone first to give an introduction of yourself of what you do in your company and what you uh, chose to do with the foundation, starting with you, Jen. Oh, I get to start. How exciting. Well, thank you for having me here today, David. Um, 
My name is Jen and I work at Foundry, which is a software vendor based in London, England. Um, software includes Nuke, Katana, Mari, very happy with open source because our software depends on open source, a lot like your studios out there. Um, and we, I am actually the outreach chair of our outreach committee, which is um, a team of marketing experts from all the member companies. And we work on a variety of different projects to promote not just our own company's involvement, but other companies' involvement um, in the open source community. That's so, great. Doug? Hi, David. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. I'm Doug Walker. I am a developer at Autodesk based in Montreal. I'm also serving as the um, chief architect on the Open Coleo Technical Steering Committee. Uh, I'm also uh, quite involved in the ACES project and am a member of the Technical Advisory Council of ACES and am chairing one of their virtual working groups. That's great. Jim. Oh, good. I can unmute. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Jim Jeffers from Intel. Uh, we are uh, a founding uh, partner and member of the Academy Software Foundation. Uh, I lead our advanced rendering and visualization efforts. Uh, I more simply said, everything ray tracing at Intel uh, and, um, and rendering. And of course, uh, our products are uh, the products my team do have always been open source. So that's very cool. And uh, Embry uh, is one product that um, is used a lot in the industry uh, for ray tracing, won an Academy Award this year. Thank you, everybody. Um, and yes, thank you. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, what was interesting is, is I, um, while we were a founding member, or uh, the uh, we weren't involved in the earliest formation, but we were brought in pretty quickly, sort of by accident. And I realized that I was the only hardware, uh, what you would call hardware vendor, although uh, Intel, I think the other twist that people don't understand is I believe Intel is somewhere number two or number three open source contributor in the world. Uh, to projects, um, you know, amount of code and all that kind of stuff. So Intel's open source focused. This just made a ton of sense. Uh, we, um, my team does the most ad advanced, uh, we hope, most advanced graphics uh, in the world. And uh, our products, uh, both software and hardware, are used across the industry. So we just want to be here to uh, support that effort ensure that the best special effects, movies, everything uh, come about and uh, being participants in it uh, was All right, I think Jim, we, you're free, freezing up a little bit. So I'll move on to John. John, why don't you tell us uh, what you do at the Linux Foundation and how you ended the Academy Software Foundation? Um, as you mentioned, I work in the Linux Foundation. I work across a number of our foundations. Uh, I think we're having a sound issue, John. Perhaps if you move closer to your microphone. All right. How about now? Does that work better? That's perfect. Sorry, yes. sorry, an input problem. Um, yeah, I, I, I work across a number of our foundations here um, in different uh, horizontal and vertical areas. Um, and really the area I focus on is the open source um, projects, both on the early days of them, helping them work to bring proposals in and bring the projects into the foundation, help them work with their initial governance, um, really being an advisor and a a guide for them, and then also, uh, you know, helping work with our technical advisory community committees as they're looking to, you know, build life cycles and build continuity um, and build sort of the resources that are needed for these communities to be successful. And, and this is something I've done um, a lot of my entire career is spending time in open source here. Um, and I'm really fortunate to work with this industry here. This has been a fun industry to work with of some really amazing and smart people. That's great. So for our audience, I want to, I want to um, really um, 
reintroduce uh, who we have in this panel um, that's, that's in front of, of our audience. So we have a, a premier member, Jim at Intel, who committed early, founding member, sitting on the board, and we'll, we're going to come back to that. What's what's the life uh, as a premier member of the foundation? Uh, we have uh, in Jen someone who's leading uh, our outreach uh, our outreach group, which is essentially uh, a big and essential part of our marketing department. Around with along with Rachel Ramoff, who's on our our staff at the foundation and doing a great work at essentially. At, bringing together all the marketing people in the industry uh, to, to help uh, them uh, with our, uh, our open source effort and have them to participate. And we have Doug Walker, who's a leader of one of the projects, which is uh, the core of our foundation of what we bring to the industry. We, we have regrouped a number of projects. Studios have donated open source software projects to the foundation so that we can bring them to the next level. And then John is, is essentially our, our partner from the Linux Foundation who brings a lot of operational knowledge of how to run a foundation. They have, they're running many foundations. They have knowledge and experience on that and they're helping us in a number of ways. So I want to go back on that, these topics with each one of our panelists. And, and I want to start with John um, to, to cover, let's call that the basics of what the foundation brings to our projects uh, in terms of uh, metrics and data. Um, and John, if you, if you want to, um, to drive us through some of those uh, data points that you have just collected for us, I'll share my screen again. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, you know, as you all know, the foundation is meant to really be that vendor neutral um, home for what open source is in this industry. Um, open source certainly existed before the Academy Software Foundation, but what we've seen in so many different industries, both verticals and horizontals, that having a vendor neutral home for these projects is what helps them grow. It's what helps them um, achieve what we like to call sustainability. Um, and, and when we think of sustainability, it's not growth for growth's sake, but it's growth in such a way that these projects can be maintained for long periods of time. They can be maintained with different parties coming in to participate. Um, and even if parties you know, have to pull back for whatever reason, there's enough of a, a group there that they continue to move these projects forward. So um, in these couple of slides, I'll kind of show you some examples of what that's looked like in some of our projects. Um, OpenColor.io, which Doug um, Walker is a member of that technical steering committee, is really a great example of this. Um, this is a project that started in the Academy Foundation at the beginning of 2019. And you see two charts here, and you'll see this for the projects we're looking at. What does the year before coming to the foundation look like? And then what has this last year, so you know, starting um, actually as of uh, two, uh, yesterday, one year back, or actually Tuesday, one year back from that look like. So what does one, one, the last year of this project look like? And what does the year before the project coming into the foundation look like? And, and Open Color is a really good example here. Um, if we look at, you know, one metric of commit growth, which is really an example of uh, velocity of a project that's grown over 300%. Um, which is a huge, huge number. But the other angle that we really look at here is the organizational diversity. So these are, what are the different companies that are heavily participating in the project look like? And what are sort of the breakdown of what their participation is? And here we're looking at it from a commit standpoint, and there's a lot of different angles to look at this, but I think a commit standpoint is a, a really good way to wrap your head around. And I think the biggest thing that stands out to us here is, we have three new um, folks who actually are members of the foundation that were very little involved in the project before and now have grown to the point where they're key contributors. Um, you know, Epic Games here, Epic Games and Weta Digital are the second and third largest committers right now in Open Color over the last year. That's something very important to be said here. Um, but we've also seen some of these other companies continue to be involved. And I think that's a really important thing that the foundation brings is as these projects come into a neutral home, you see companies more apt to invest in them because they see their opportunity to help steer the direction. They see these becoming true community assets and it shows a path towards sustainability. Um, we can look forward into another project here 
um, OpenQ, and this is one here that came to the foundation um, in uh, 2018. And again, this is a really good example um, of a project here. Um, this one here was much more of an internal project. So there wasn't um, a lot of, you know, I think the commit um, diversity here or the commit numbers really haven't changed, although we've seen a 25% increase over the last year compared to the year before. But I think the big thing that comes in here is there's new contributing organizations. I mean, before this was a Google Sony project, now we're seeing Facebook, now we're seeing Electric Theater Collective um, and others start to come to the table. And I think that is showing more companies are investing in this as it becomes a neutral home. Uh, if we look at another example here, uh, OpenEXR, and this is one that I know the entire industry is very dependent on. And if you look at the breakdown of committers um, on the year really previous here, this was really driven by, you know, Weta and Lucasfilm, um, you know, with Facebook and a few others you know, involved. Now we have seen not only a 300% commit growth, but we've seen new players come in here, Sony, Epic, AMD, um, along with you know, several other organizations are coming in here and becoming larger committers and contributors to this code base and heavily participating. And that's kind of changing this curve here where we're seeing a, a greater diversity of people being involved. And we can see this in more and more projects. Um, you know, if we look at another one here, um, OpenVDB is a really great example here. This one here, I think we've seen sort of the pie chart change around a little bit where we've seen some committers, which were of smaller numbers really start to grow out. So we've seen sort of the diverse base and also the commit number. So we're 500% commit growth um, from you know the year before they came in to over the last year. So really some impressive numbers here. Uh, another one is I believe open timeline IO. Um, and this one here, again, this is a little bit of a newer project and um, they're working on getting off the ground here. The commit numbers I think have been fairly even, maybe even a little bit down, but the organizational diversity is what changed. Here before you had Pixar very, very much in the dominant here. Now you're seeing, yes, they are the predominant committer, but you see such a larger group of people coming in, um, you know, with Netflix and Autodesk and others just jumping in here and contributing. And so you're seeing more and more companies beginning to invest in these projects. So that's really an example as you're sort of looking at it from a project by project um, point of view. Um, open shading language is a, is a much newer one here of coming in um, in 2020. And, you know, this one here, we've seen a commit growth, but again, we've also seen new companies coming into the project with Unity and, and Weta Digital. And that's growing you know, this pie here and growing more committers. And again, this being a newer project, our anticipation over time is these colored bars are gonna continue to increase and grow. Um, you know, A lot of where we see a healthy project start to get towards is there's no one committer that is over um, half of the contributing, or, you know, there's no one contributing organization that's over half of the commits and committers. That's what we're seeing is healthy. That's what we're seeing is a very vibrant ecosystem. And if we just look at the overall numbers here, um, 2020, um, again, this being a pandemic year, so you, know, you could argue that there are some impacts on stats, although um, while we did see a dip at the beginning of the pandemic, we saw that pick up as the pandemic went on. And, and that's sort of a pattern we've seen across open source with commits um, and lines of code change. But if we look at uh, 2021, where we're at to date here, um, we're really going to uh, lines of code uh, change. We're here, we're going to blow that number away here. Um, and we're going to see more and more contributors. And I think our commit numbers are going to match, you know, fairly as well. So we're seeing that continuous growth begin to happen new projects coming into the foundation are a huge part, and also more of these organizations finding different ways that they're organi um, investing, not only member organizations, but also other companies within the industry as well. And we can even look at that from the aspect of just um, project collaboration here on the Slack side of things. Um, you know, just over 114,000 messages, um, you know, 1,000, um, you know, for, uh, for 1,140 uh, Slack messages, already we've beat that number and we're halfway through 2021. So we're seeing more and more collaboration beginning to happen. And the Slack collaboration is almost a, an early sign of where we're gonna see the later collaboration happening in the project. Cause you see people engage in the Slack communities and have those conversations first 
and then that leads them to contributing. So some real fascinating things we're seeing there. Thank you, John, for that. It's uh, really lots of great data that we could pour over for a long time. I think the, the salient point and why I, I wanted you on the panel is really to, as we talk about all the benefits, um, it's good to start on the actual hard data. And that's something that through our partnership with the Linux Foundation, we, we not only bring benefits to projects, but we track those, those benefits. And we can see, you know, projects that are, you know, hitting it out of the park. We can also see those who are going slower and we, we have visibility on what we could do to, to improve them. So that's really great. And thank you, John, for this presentation. So I want to, on the basis of that, I want to move back to, um, to you, Jen, and, and the outreach committee now at, at the other end of our, of our spectrum of activities uh, where you, uh, well, how is how do you run the outreach committee and what do you looking what are you looking at, at doing with it you're on mute thank you <laughs> try again oh, wow. um third time's a charm yeah so um for everyone's uh benefit the outreach committee is a group of members based basically from every member member company if you go back to that original slide that david shared um there's about about 20 of us that meet um it ebbs and flows based on 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 people's schedules we meet once a month and we really try and go back into the principles of the foundation what is the foundation trying to do and how can we help spread the good word of the foundation so a big element to the foundation, of course, is showcasing the projects. So one of the projects that we recently highlighted as part of the outreach committee is we did a whole vendor backgrounder on OCIO v2. So we asked all of our member companies who are producing hardware or software, um, and it became very software focused, which makes sense. <laughs> we love OCIO v2, nukes a fan. <laughs> um, and we really looked at every company uh, that was involved. So we had feedback from Adobe and Epic, SideFX, Autodesk, um, as well as a couple of others that contributed. And it was great. And just anecdotally, we had a recent meeting um, about OCIO v2 internally at Foundry about Nuke um, implementing OCIO v2 and the team referenced that article about where all the other companies were and how it was a big part of the community. So it kind of warmed my heart a little bit to see that my team was using that information <laughs> that we gathered. But the, really the goal is to highlight the work that the foundation is doing and how that's implemented in software um, day to day, as well as the film projects um, that you saw earlier in the show reel. Another important aspect of the outreach committee is to support our amazing diversity and inclusion committee. Um, that's one of the highlights of what we're doing um, at the foundation. There's a team of members um, and it's made up of educators, technical experts, developers, HR folks, um, marketing experts. And we meet also once a month as an aside to the um, outreach committee. And we are focused on a series of initiatives to bring in a more diverse um, community to the ASWF. And that's been amazing. And there's a panel later today where a few of us will be talking about some of the initiatives, but the outreach committee supports the marketing efforts as part of that. So we do profiles of members um, to showcase the diversity uh, that we have in our own membership. And we also have done a series of um, webinars talking about jobs in the industry and just bringing attention to the various R&D and engineering jobs um, that are out there in, in the hopes of bringing more students who are studying engineering, bringing into the foundation and letting them be aware of all the great stuff that um, all the member companies are doing. That's great. It's very, very important work. Um, we'll get back to you in our call of action um, at, the end, at the end of the panel. Doug Walker, you are uh, the architect of Open Color IOV2 and uh, one of the leaders of the group. Um, so tell us from that position, how, how did you get involved with OCIO in the first place? How was joining the foundation helpful for the project? Well, Sony Imageworks introduced Open Color IO in 2011, and it became very successful and has been used on almost all of the VFX oriented movies. And despite that success, as, as often as happens, you know, fairly often with open source projects, it, the, the project went through a bit of a lull and there was not a single update between 2013 and 2017. And so in 2017, Autodesk got involved and we 
we reached out to ImageWorks, we had a vision for what we thought would be a good next step for OpenCore.io. And so we collaborated with ImageWorks on a proposal uh, for, um, uh, you know, for what we were thinking and presented that to the community at the Birds of a Feather in SIGGRAPH 2017. And uh, on the success of that proposal really um, convinced Autodesk to invest. And one of the first things we did was we created a uh, OpenCoreo V2 working group uh, consisting of existing OCIO contributors along with uh, people like in the ACES community and, and other interested parties. And the, the input from that group uh, was really invaluable. And so that's, I, I think, one of the first kind of ASWF benefits that I'd like to highlight is just the, the power of validation. You know, when you're making an investment, of course, you want to make sure that you're investing in the right thing. And, you know, certainly there are a lot of ways to do that. But in terms of open source projects, uh, for our industry, I think, you know, the ASWF is the best place I know of right now to do that sort of validation work. Amazing. And so tell us a bit more about um, when, when the project joined the foundation and um, about the release of the, of the new version that you just had. So, um, yeah, so the, um, the, you know, as, as we were um, joining the ASWF and uh, doing a lot of the things that John was talking about. You know, John was talking about um, the sustainability, and you know that's really a um, uh, another key benefit of, of the ASWF. You know, things like governance and um, you know licensing, uh, documentation, uh, automated testing, security. All of these things are are easy to ignore, but they're um, they're super important and a project cannot be sustainable without them. So, um, you know, we, we had that going on and at the same time we were working on the new features for, uh, for OCLV2 and after three years of development work um, at SIGGRAPH uh, of last year, uh, the, the V2 uh, went into uh, beta testing and then it was released at the beginning of this year um, and we've gotten a lot of um, Great feedback from from companies who are, uh, you know, starting to adopt it in their own products. And at Autodesk, we've already adopted it in Maya and our Arnold renderer, and uh, we're working on others. And and as as Jen pointed out, there's a great article on the ASDF website uh, with interviews with other companies um, from Nuke to Houdini to uh, even Photoshop who are looking to to adopt it. So uh, that's been uh, super gratifying and. Uh, you know, as we discussed at the at the OCIO session yesterday, uh, we're we're um, releasing a 2.1 version later this month uh, that um, has contributions from uh, a, a variety of companies, including Epic Games, um, Weta, DNAG, uh, and Autodesk, of course. That's great. All right, and Jim, I want last but not least. You are um, a board member. You're a premier member, Intel. Uh, tell us about about the the ex your experience with the foundation from that point of view. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, we joined, uh, you know, with uh, with me kind of uh, leading the way. Uh, and I mean, I thought it was a great idea from the beginning, but it was relatively new for me. I'd never been a board member of of any type of foundation. Um, but wow, it's been so gratifying. And, um, you know, from a personal perspective and an Intel perspective, um, the board members are all, you know, obviously top notch people. So nobody, you know, no uh, company or somebody, you know, looked at it as trivial. They put their best people, um, you know, who are. We're having a, a, a connection um, problem with you, Jim. Uh, I think the, uh, we'll wait for, for that to reestablish. Sorry, itself. am I back? Yes, you're back now. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, as, uh, as they uh, say in the Spider Man movie, um, you know, a great, um, uh, you know, great honor, great uh, responsibility. Um, 
uh, to uh, you know honor the goals um, without people strong arming each other. You know, so what's really great is is you have um, a stellar group of people with no ego. I mean, and so we get a lot done. And uh, you know, again, John represented a lot of the numbers and everything. And that really has to do with creating that foundation of trust and uh, belief in what we're doing, uh, open dialogue, uh, open discussion, and um, just getting to learn from the really smart people on the board and how that trickles down into the projects, I think um, is pretty amazing. So I guess on behalf of the board, I want to say, and you know, kind of both inside looking out and outside looking in, this is really a phenomenal organization. Uh, you know, one of the best group of people I'm involved with, where they're mapping their passion to action, utilizing the support of Linux Foundation, and you just see it in the projects we've brought in. So um, it's uh, been great for Intel. It's been, uh, you know great for open source, which we're behind. Um, and uh, things that I never thought, so I'm going to uh, bring up a quick anecdote um, about how our participation ended up, you know, actually one being a help to Intel and a help to the foundation. I think Larry Gritz, I think in his thing was saying, one of the goals of being on here, maybe it's a selfish goal for a company, is quote, you know, the influence or influencing that sustainability. How do you mix that in a way that ends up with a win for everybody? So, did you announce the asset repository? Is that announced, or am I announcing it they, now? They have, they have their, uh, they're the last session of today. So it's a good uh, plug you're doing. Uh, and I do there's a an announcement then? coming. Yes, sorry, uh, I pre-announced it. I'm, I'm known for right. doing that at Intel too. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, the uh, the anecdote is uh, the newest thing you know on our on our docket coming. We mentioned OSL. Uh, John did. Uh, which is great, brought that on. But this is one of the first, first I guess you would call it bespoke or, or um, crafted by the Academy Software Foundation, which is we call the asset repository. You'll hear more about it later. Uh, but if you think about that real quickly, it's a variety, a goal to build a variety of real world digital assets that open source oriented folks can utilize in their research, in their product development, uh, you know, and I would say from the Intel perspective, as much as we've been involved in the industry, the number one thing that we've had trouble with is, is what I would call validating that our code runs with the most complex assets. So we were very deeply wanted to be involved. And then you would think, or you would know if you're part of this industry, that IP and licensing is just really scary. <laughs> and what I was happy to do on behalf of Intel was, you know, we crafted things, we're going back and forth, but I was able to bring back uh, into our Intel open source experts as, and explain to them what we were trying to do and help create the legal document um, now people added to it, but we kind of rejiggered the foundation of the document so that it met everybody's needs, including a company's vendors like Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, you know, people who do that because we have various needs as well. And, we, and I was just very pleased that we were able to contribute to something that you would never think Intel would be, what is, how does Intel do, yes, we do software, yes, we do processors, what do we care about digital data, right? That, you know, and so the point is, is we do, and we were able to, um, you know, make that, uh, you know, make that contribution in a win-win situation for everybody. So uh, from a standpoint of gratification of our contributions, that's one, one example. You saw that we contribute to OSL, we're involved in other things, but anyway, that's don't want great. to take up all the time, but that's kind of an anecdote of being part of the board and then how we help each other, mm -hmm. because I'm not the only one who has gone and done that. Uh, the, um, 
uh, I it was Autodesk, I believe, who drove some new influx in the, into the diversity and inclusion area. So everybody looks at the area they're both passionate about and has success in and adds that contribution. Obviously, we put some money in, but I think it's more that brain power and that usefulness of your organization. That And I see that across the board. That's, that's not just us. That was just our little part of it. Thank you, Jim. Um, that's a, David, a if I may... Yes. If I may add to that, I just wanted to add to just what, what Jim was saying, just because I really believe that it, it kind of goes with my philosophy of being part of the ASWF is you really get what you put into it. The more Absolutely. you participate, whether you, you have someone participating in the marketing organization, you have someone, people participating on the TSCs, you have someone on the board as a member, um, you have someone on the DNI committee, you know, it just broadens that reach, that understanding of the industry and what really, um, you know, what keeps other, what you call your, your competitors, your, your partners, your customers up at night. Um, so yeah, I, I would suggest anyone interested in getting involved, just do it. Don't wait. You know, there's such a rich opportunity from a developer to a marketer, to an HR professional to be involved in the foundation. Um, yep. It's fantastic. That's good. That's good. Um, I want to invite, um, we have about less than 10 minutes left, so I'd like to invite our audience to, um, to ask questions to our uh, panelists here as you hear about the foundation and various aspects of it. And uh, Any question that you may have for our, our panelists, I, there's a poll that's up now. If you go to your uh, phone and um, you will have that question and you can enter any questions you may have, we encourage you to do that. And as, um, as that's up there, I want to, to go back around um, the group and, and ask you about, um, about your call to action for, for what you do and in the part of that your contribution. Um, so, you know, for Jen, the, the outreach committee, for Doug on your project, for Jim, you know, how, how uh, companies can become a member um, and, and, um, and all of those things. Um, starting with you, with you, Jen, the outreach committee, what, what's your call to action on the, on the outreach committee? How can people join? So on the outreach committee, it's wide open to any member representatives, any company member representatives. So um, anyone is is welcome to join. Um, if you, you know you work at a large company and you don't know who's your ASWF rep, I'm I'm going to just look at Intel or even Autodesk. You know, and you're working at Intel and and you're like, how do I get involved? I'm in marketing and I would love to be part of this. Or I I'm in HR. You don't need to be in marketing. Um, you don't need to be in any actual um, discipline, but just join, join, join our Slack channel. The instructions on the community are all on aswf.io um, and come join us, come check it out. And same with the DNI committee. Um, that's actually open to, it's a broader range than just uh, member companies. We have folks from edu educators, we have students. So sign up, join, listen in on the Slack conversations um, and feel free to raise your hand. It's one of the most open, inclusive com communities I've been part of in this industry. Um, we just welcome anyone's interest, support, passion. Um, yeah, just fit. when I got handed the portfolio to manage ASWF at Foundry, I was like, what do I do? <laughs> I have no idea. Went to a couple of meetings, still didn't really know what to do. Um, and then just kind of jumped in, started talking to John, started talking to, uh, to Rachel and, and some other members. And, and really there's a wealth of opportunity to, to have an impact, whether you're developing code, whether you're hiring people, just jo jump in and, and figure it out and um, talk to a member and we'll, we'll help you find where your passion fits. And like I think Jim called out, mash, matching your passion to action, I think is really a big opportunity at ASWF. That's great. And Doug, from your point of view um, in, about OCIO, um, how to join, but also what's, what's your vision for OCIO? Where will, where will it go next? Well, I, we have a number of new features that we're talking about, but what I want to sort of highlight as perhaps a call to action for OCIO, um, the OCIO community is really about collaboration. So OCIO has had a, as a nice ongoing collaboration with the ACES project, but I think we've only scratched the surface within uh, the ASWF projects, many of whom uh, have an interest in color, like Material X, Open Timeline IO, 
uh, there are these natural connections. And I think, you know, the, the individual projects have been uh, becoming very successful on their own, but I think the next step uh, of how uh, we all can take it to the next level is to uh, deepen the connections between uh, the projects. And so I think that's going to be a focus for OpenCLIO in the coming year um, is collaborating with other ASWF projects. Um, you know, part of this goes to trying to make color management uh, easier and more seamless, but um, the ASWF has attracted such a brilliant connect, uh, collection of people and created such, you know, a, a great neutral forum for collaboration. So we really want to tap into that and, uh, you know, see what we can build um, in partnership with the other projects. That's great. And, and Jim, as, um, as a premier member, um, what, what's your call to action? Oh yeah, I mean it's very it's very similar, but um, you know, there, uh, man, I don't know. If you don't like film, if you don't like pixels, um, you know, I think everybody everybody does. This is again uh, to what Jen was saying and everything. We really we're. Uh... Your, your your connection is stuttering a little bit again. Just at the moment where you were going to deliver your call to action. Thank you. There we go. You're back. I am sorry. I turned off my video. There's something going on with my internet connection. Uh, no so hopefully uh, you saw enough of me. Um, the um, yeah, I mean the call to action is, uh, you know, if your company large or small. Um, join up, uh, have your company become a, you know, a, a general member. Um, there are some requirements, but they're not, you know, they're not onerous. Um, if you're a larger company, you know, profitable company, even joining as a premier member is, you know, I wouldn't call it onerous. Uh, the easy answer to be, you want to become a premier member is call David. <laughs> so that's the, uh, that's yes. the easy Thank answer. You. Uh, but you, you can also call me too, if you wanted to talk about it, what's it like. Um, but this is so fun. So it's, it's fun, it's cool, it's rewarding. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think I was, um, again, uh, you know, I see the charts all the time, but I think I saw York University and uh, you know multiple uh, academic organizations contributing. I think there's how do I join as an individual? It's free. You mm -hmm. you get on the website. Uh, you know, look for your passion. Uh, if it's Open Color I O, like Doug was talking about, or or, or even just want to do it, you know, dig in. It's open source. It's open. That's why we're here. Um, Great. But um, yeah. I can't speak highly enough for the integrity, um, the uh, and and the ability of the people. You know, these are you know elite teams here who are completely open and and and, and take beginners to uh, specialists, and therefore beginners can learn from the from people like Doug. You know, so. I just, uh, you know, think it's um, uh, one of the best things that Intel and I personally have done. It's just um, really would love people to uh, contribute because that's our goal. Thank you, Jim. That's great. Um, maybe in the last uh, few minutes that we have, um, John, you can, uh, the, to that question, how do I join as an individual? Um, can, can you give us um, or give our audience a, a summary of uh, the place where they can go to uh, to join and participate uh, to to double click on what Jim said to join as an and as, as an individual there is no fee there is no membership uh, gate or anything you just join the lists and all the various uh, ways that we have correct yeah if you go to um, aswf.io/projects you can learn about all of our technical projects as david said they're open to anybody. They're completely transparent how they work. All of their meetings are completely open. Um, and, you know, and you can also join our Slack channel at slack.aswf.io. And you can join in the conversations and, and hear what's happening there as well. I mean, I would, 
I would encourage anyone who has any interest in these projects, start with those resources. Um, all the code is up on our GitHub, um, github.com slash Academy Software Foundation. And, you know, take a look, try it out, download it. Um, and, you know, take part in some of the meetings, take part in some of the discussions. And, you know, as this becomes more useful to your organization, um, then, you know, look to, you know, talk to David on uh, exploring ways for your organization to get involved. But we really just encourage all of you as technologists in this field, get involved in these projects and check them out and, and take part. That is great. And so uh, with that, we're coming up to the hour. Uh, I want to thank our panel very much for coming to us and uh, giving all that insight on the various aspects of how you can work uh, with the foundation to make it a benefit to your organization and, and to yourself. And, and thank you for the volunteering work. It's still work. It's still uh, an investment of time you need to do. Um, and uh, all, the all the panelists here have done that. And um, thank you for that. We're a great team. It's really fun working together uh, and moving open source forward in our in our industry. Very gratifying because the time has come. I think, as as Matt was saying on the video, we came in at a time where there was already this groundswell of energy around open source, and now it's about making the best of it, all of us together. So in a new way. So it's really really good. Thank you um, very much. And I want to invite our uh, attendees for the conference. Next is ACES. Um, the ACES presentation will be there in 15 minutes, charting a vibrant and open plan for ACES version two, a friend of the foundation. And we're looking forward to that. So thank you again, and we will see you throughout the day. Thanks, David. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, thank you. Bye.